Hi, this is Paul Turner with Venify, and in this session of SSH 101, we're going to talk a little bit about SSH keys, how they're used and why they're used. So let's get started. Here we've got Alice. She's an application administrator, and she needs access to Server 1. She's going to be doing some administration on Server 1. And Bob, who's the administrator for Server 1, he's going to go ahead and set up SSH on there so that when she logs in, she can log in securely so her password's not seen over the wire. When he sets up SSH on the server, it creates a public and private key pair. And that's to identify the server and enable secure communications to and from the server. So now when Alice connects, what's going to happen is that the server is going to return its public key. And the first time that uh, Alice connects, her SSH client is actually going to display that key for her and say, hey, this I just received this from Server 1, haven't connected up to Server 1 before. Is this the correct public key for Server 1? And what Alice should do is she should double check with Bob and say, okay, let's make sure this is a correct public key. Because when she types in yes or whatever response she needs to give to acknowledge that key, it permanently stores that key in a file with the name of the server. So it's always trusted. She won't be asked for that again. So it's very important, obviously, that she correctly identifies that public key. Now, once she's done this, Alice is able to log in. She's able to give in her password and, and it's secure. It's uh, encrypted over the uh, network connection. But after a while, she says, you know, I log into about 50 servers with SSH. It's a bit of a pain. She does a little bit of Googling. She figures out, hey, I can create my own key pair. So this is different than the server's key pair. It's a, a key pair that's specific to her, a public and a private key. And with this, if Bob has given her permissions, and we'll come back to this in a later session, if he's given her permissions to do so, she can take and place her public key into her account in a file called an authorized keys file. And when she does that, what that tells the server is, if she can demonstrate that she has the private key, and her client does this, she doesn't do this herself, but if she can demonstrate that she has the private key, then it will automatically log her in without requiring her to put in her password. And that basically allows her to log in much more easily. So if she's logging into another server, server two, for example, when she logs in, she can say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and place my public key into my account on this server as well. And by virtue of that, I won't have to put in my password there. Now you also notice that when she first connected up, um, she was presented with the public key for server two and she had to accept that as well. Now there's another use case in addition to Alice logging in and doing administration, there's another use case where SSH keys can be used. And that's where we're connecting up between two servers. So if I've got server two that needs, a, a, there's an automated process that's gonna wake up and need to do something on server one, what Alice can do is she can say, you know, I'm the administrator for this process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up an account on server two, and I'm going to generate a key pair, just like it did for myself. I'm going to generate a key pair that I can use um, for this automated process so it can automatically authenticate and a password isn't required. To do that, she takes and places the public key of this key pair that she created into the account on server two that it that, that automated process is gonna connect into. Now you'll notice here that what's happened is that when she first set up this connection, she also had to accept server one's public key on this server for this particular account so that it's trusted. Now if you step back and look at this, what we've done is we've given you a little bit of an idea of how SSH keys are used. And what you start to see is the complexity that can be set up with all of these trust relationships because by virtue of setting up this public private key pair on this server and having it trusted on this server, there's an automatic trust that's set up. And anybody that's able to get access to this particular account, now they're able to automatically connect up to server one. So now we have a bunch of explicit trust between these systems. And what that can enable is if you have an organization that is not tracking the setting up of these SSH keys, you can have these trusts all over your environment. That can create a lot of risk. We'll follow up on those risks in a future session. For now, that's it for this session of SSH 101. Hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great day. Thanks a bunch.